Good evening, professor and class. In this week's video presentation, I will be discussing the possibility of the Freemasons being responsible for the American Revolution. Before we begin, I would like to show you all a Freemason apron. This apron was given to me by Dufferin Lodge 338 out of Welland, Canada. Uh, it's in the province of Ontario. Uh, this lodge is what would be known as a Master Mason's apron and is well over 100 years old. Um, it's made of lambskin right here, and this gold trim designates when this lodge became over a century old in its own right. Uh, moving right along, as many as many very well know, our founding fathers had many Masonic connections, from George Washington to Benjamin Franklin to Paul Revere, the Masons to the very first stone of the Capitol building being laid in a Masonic. Uh, ritual. It is no doubt that Freemasonry and its ancient rituals have been indicated in many of our country's founding and does play a part in the fabric of America's origin story. There is, however, too much doubt cast upon the belief that Freemasonry caused the revolution, and therefore my belief and thesis is that Freemasons, while playing pivotal roles in the America's origin story, did not provoke the revolution because they were Freemasons, but because they were patriots. And getting to the truth of the matter, we must investigate some of the key events that occurred both in Freemasonry and in the American Revolution. The first of which is to peruse James Anderson's Constitutions of 1738, which describes the duty of Freemasons. This document starts with the history of the Freemasons, beginning with who James Anderson describes as the first Freemason, Adam of the Bible, to the charges and the oaths of a Freemason. The, the document never describes acts of aggression against fellow countrymen or any verbiage which could, be, which could lead to an insurrection. Secondly, we should look at the various Freemasons who were involved in the American Revolution. While George Washington was a well-known Freemason, both Benjamin Franklin and Paul Revere were Freemason Grand Masters of Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, History has seemingly forgotten about Freemason and Patriot traitor Benedict Arnold. Additionally, history seems to pass over the fact that there were more British Freemasons in the country than Patriot Freemasons. One Masonic fraternity known as the Prince Hall Masons was denied a warrant by the American Freemasons and then awarded a warrant by the Grand Lodge of England, granting them under the name of African Lodge No. 1. The history of these and many other examples pose serious threats to the narrative that Freemasons instigated the American Revolution, as the advo advocator of such a position would have to first explain why Freemasons existed on both sides of the political issue, and why th there were affiliations between Freemasons long after the war had broken out. Robert Freak Gould, a prominent 19th century Masonic historian, wrote a large collection of history surrounding military lodges, in which he lists hundreds of operating lodges both in the Old World and in the New World, as well as lodges from both sides of the American Revolution. This is yet further evidence that Freemasonry did not cause the American Revolution, lest it stands to reason all British, Scottish, Irish, and Hessian Freemasons would have abandoned the British line to join themselves to the patriots fighting against them. Moving on to the documents that shaped the American Revolution and their creators, it is widely accepted that the Declaration of Independence was based on the Virginia Declaration of Rights, which also influenced the Bill of Rights. Its creator, George Mason, is not known to be a Freemason. Additionally, Thomas Jefferson and John Adams were not known to be Freemasons. In fact, John Quincy Adams, the son of John Adams, would in 1833 write a scathing anti-Masonic letter after the Morgan Affair in which anti-Mason William Morgan disappeared after threatening to reveal the secrets of a local Freemason lodge. Lastly, in our quest for truth, let us turn our attention to a newly installed worshipful master, the head of a lodge quartered in England, the master known only as Brother C... Dot, 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 right, worshipful master, would tell us, fellow brothers, that Freemasonry, and I quote, 
directs us to be peaceable subjects, to give no umbrage to the civil powers, and to never be concerned in plots and conspiracies against the well-being of the nation." End quote. This simple speech is a powerful piece of evidence and that he is of the opinion that Freemasonry is completely separate from the powers that be. That the decisions of the Parliament should not concern the Freemason, completely rivaling the narrative of Masons instigating a revolution because of King George's Parliament. That said, it is acknowledged history that the Sons of Liberty were comprised of several Freemasons, it is also factual that several Freemasons met in Boston at St. Andrew's Lodge in the Green Dragon Tavern, the very night that the Boston Tea Party occurred, with meeting notes stating that the lodge was canceled due to a lack of quorum. Where it is acceptable to conclude that Freemasons left the meeting early to don Indian garments and attack a ship, it is unacceptable to conclude that it was because of Freemasonry that they performed such action. It is therefore the conclusion that Freemasons, while playing pivotal roles in the American Revolution, were not enjoined by any doctrine to pursue such action. These patriots were indeed motivated to seek liberty, but it was not by the tenets of Freemasonry. While it is possible they may have abused their connections to the fraternity, or used the veil of secrecy to carry out the American Revolution, it should not be conflated that a fraternity caused the revolt. Freemasonry, as the evidence shows, was a victim of the Patriots. Thank you for watching this video. Have a blessed evening.